This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I feel like David, when David said, I was glad when they just said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It, he, he didn't wait till he got to the house of the Lord to be glad, but he was glad when they just mentioned it. So I feel like David on this afternoon, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go before God's presence with our worship and with our praise and with our thanksgiving. And let us just lift up the name of the Lord and edify the body of Christ. So I truly thank and praise God for this day that he has given us. We're going to go ahead and get started in our service on this afternoon. And I'm going to ask Minister Darlene Lilly if she will lead us in our opening prayer. Amen, amen, and glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you, Lord, as humble as we know how, God. Thanking you, God, for this Sunday, God, that we haven't seen before, God. We thank you for this ministry, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord Jesus, that you extend to us daily, God. We don't take it for granted, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing in our right mind with the use and activities of our limbs, God. We thank you, God, for each and everything that you're doing in our life, God. We thank you for seeing another Sunday, God. Oh, Lord, we're asking you to go before the line, God, and clear up anything, God, that's not like you, God, so that we may be edified on this Sunday afternoon, God, lifting up the name of Jesus, God, glorifying you, God. And as the pastor come forward, God, in the word, God, we ask you to use her, God, according to your will, God, that she may speak, God, that someone may be healed, delivered, and set free, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for each and every one that's on the line this afternoon, the ones that's coming on, God, the ones that are not here, God, that want to be, and the ones that don't want to, God. We're asking you, God, oh God, to touch their heart, clear up the way, God, that they too may be here, God, on the line to receive a blessed word from you, God, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus, God. Oh Hallelujah. God, touch the pastor, God, her mind, body, and so God, use her, Lord Jesus, God. Oh God, we bless your name, God, and we glorify you, God. Oh God, if you do these things, God, we'll be so ever careful and indebted, God, to glorify you, praise you, lift you up and honor you, God. If it's anything in anybody on this line, God, that's not like you, Lord, we're asking you, God, to remove it right now in the name of Jesus, God, so that we may be blessed, God, according to your word, God. We love you. We praise you, God. You said whatever we ask in Jesus' name, God, these things may be granted unto us, God. We ask you in our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus' name, we pray and pray. Amen, amen, and glory to God, and thank you, Jesus, in advance for what you're going to do. Amen and hallelujah. amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. You, hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, I couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, I couldn't keep it to myself. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me, you ought to be there when he Save my soul, you ought to been there when he wrote my name on the road. And I started walking, I started talking, I started singing, I started showing what the Lord has done for me. Said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, I couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, I couldn't keep it to myself. Said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to been there, you ought to been there when he saved my soul. You ought to been there, you ought to been there when he put my name on the road. And I started walking, I started talking, I started singing, I started shouting what the Lord has done for me. Whoa, sign me up. For the 
the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the road. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me, and I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, oh, oh. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the road. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me, and I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down, I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burden down, I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burden down, my burden's down, Lord, burden's down, Lord, since I laid my burden down, burden down, Lord, burden down, Lord, since I laid my burden down. My friends don't treat me no like they used to since I laid my burden down. Friends don't treat me not like they used to since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Since I laid my burden down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord. Since I laid my burden down, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. You're the praise the Lord. Lift your voice, everybody. Praise the Lord, lift your voice, everybody. Praise the Lord, lift your voice, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord, shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord, oh, shout for joy, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. I said everybody ought to praise the Lord. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And now we'll have our welcome address by Sister Brianna Ross. Good afternoon, everybody. We here at Greater Love Christian Church would like to welcome any newcomers. If you don't have a church home, please feel free to join ours. Um, let us on this day praise the Lord and be glad and rejoice that He woke us up this morning. Amen. Amen. Next, we are going to the part of service, which I extremely love, and that is the part where everybody can participate, is what we refer to as testimony service, is where we come forward and we strengthen each other and we encourage each other, encourage each other with the things that God has um, brought us through, God has delivered us from, God had, has been with us in, in it all, and we can tell each other our story. Um, the Bible says that's how we overcome, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So it is an awesome thing to have a testament unto God and to, to that of the body of Christ to edify your uh, fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, to let them know if God has done it for me, he can, he can do it for you because we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says, I change not. So we just think and praise God for a testimony service. Is there a testimony at this time? Is there one? Amen. Hi. Amen. Amen. Oh, um, sorry for my blackout. It's because I'm in the car and um, I, I will take myself off, but I am driving. But I do want to give God the glory and the honor, and I want to bless his name on this morning. Truly in the night, my back was hurting me really, really bad. So I wasn't going to make it out to the service this morning, which started at 10 o'clock. And I sent the text out, you know, stating that, you know, I had, you know, overslept because my back was bothering me last night. So the young lady from this, but I, I felt so grieved not making it out to the church because I like to be dedicated in the things that are of God. And when I miss a beat, I, I feel like empty. Like I just don't feel right. So the lady at church called me, she said, darling. And before I could even say anything, she said, you got to come out. Your son is speaking at church today. And I'm like, what? Oh, wow. And so my son and my niece, yes, my son and my niece spoke and my sister said that when she woke up this morning, God had told her to reach out to my son and my niece and to have them to speak because they had a word and they both accepted it. Oh my God, so I jumped up in pain. You see, the enemy tries to stop us from doing and being in a place where God wants us to be at. But God will make a way from, for us if we have a press in us and, and we want to get there, but the enemy is doing something to try to hold us back. God will make a way. He'll send someone. So I said, well, try to hold it up for five minutes. She said, well, you know, you know, you know the pastor. Well. So I said, I'm coming. So I, I, I hurry up. I got dressed and I, I jumped in and I went to go hit the um, remote to open my door of my car. And it wouldn't work. And I'm like, oh my God. So I took the key out of the remote and I put it in the door and I went to go press the push start on my car, on my truck and the truck wouldn't start. I said, okay, God got something for me because the enemy don't want me to make it out to this service this morning. So my, my, my youngest son, he went out and he just brought a new Audi and I know he wasn't trying. <laughs> I, I called him. I said, Terrell, listen, bring me your key to your car. I got to get to church. And I had such a firmness in my voice. Like I needed to get to church. He brought his key right downstairs and I made it to hear my son minister a word of God for the first time in Amen. the house of God, God, along with my niece. And he blessed the service and my niece and very quickly, he talked about how um, things that people take away from you elevate yourself in your lowness. 
you elevate yourself. He said, if they take your job, go get another one. He said, God is our father. There's no good thing that he will withhold yes. from us. And my niece came and she talked about who our father is. And she talked about my father, which have gone home since 96, that he was, you know, an example in our life, but we got a true father that won't hold no good thing Hallelujah. from us. And they both spoke so well. Like, I was so grateful. The pain from my body immediately left. Hmm. See, the enemy wanted me to stay home and, and dwell in my pain. But the press that I had inside of me of feeling so empty because I wanted to get there. Then, glory to God, Jesus. Then it was time for me to get online here and I couldn't find the Zoom link. I'm like, oh my God. So I text Robin at the pastor and I couldn't get it. So then I, 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 I called her. Then I didn't get an answer because she probably was getting everybody online. Then I text Dawn. And, and Dawn said, Robin's going to put you on it. See, the <laughs> enemy tries to hold us back from the great things that God had for us in our press in our life. But when we press towards that high mark in Christ, God will make a way yes. for us to be glory in to place God. so that we can yeah, lift each yeah. other up and he can glorify us and he can get the glory Hallelujah. out of what the enemy tried to do. God Hallelujah. will be there for us. It's all in the press. I feel good today. I didn't yes. feel so great this morning. You know, I didn't feel that good this morning. I didn't have that, you know, I had a press, but the enemy tried to block the blessings that got, I'm excited I made it on the line. And all, if I can encourage someone, if it's in your heart, keep pressing, keep doing it, and then watch what God do in your press. Yes. He's awesome. I love him. I'm happy. I feel better. And I'm so glad I was able to be a part of this line this afternoon. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Praise, Praise God. God. What a wonderful testimony. Thank you. Thank Jesus. God for that testimony. You know, it's just good to know that God is always with us. And he is a prayer answering God. So we just thank and praise God and, and, and for the for you to press your way and for the pain to escape. You know, once you heard the word of God, we got is just an on time God. He just cares about us so much. He loves us so much, more than we can even fathom. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for those who love him. So we just thank and praise God for being a faithful God in the name of Jesus. Is there another? I think I seen Salisa was getting ready to tell a testimony. I just like to just thank him. Period. Uh -oh. <laughs> I just am going through a lot. So Praise God. Praise God. We'll be sure when it's time for altar call prayer to call your name out specifically. Is there another testimony? I just have a quick testimony. So at my job, I'm contracted through a temp agency. And I think it was like two and a half to three weeks that the manager came to me and he said, I'd like to offer your position. Now, normally you would have to give 600 hours before you can even be considered as you know a candidate for the job. So let me tell you, favor is not fair. When God says, hmm. well, elevation truly does come from God. When he says it, then it is so. Yes. So I will be making eighteen dollars an hour as opposed to Hallelujah. and then they want to train me for a high speed position which is even more so mm. i just want to thank and praise god that you know his favor is upon me yes yes hallelujah god is good favor is not fair we just thank god for the favor the grace that accompanies us the mercy of, that follows us we just thank and praise god for for those those beautiful things that he gives us i'm telling you we we can't even imagine how much he wants to bless us and and, and how much he loves us and how much he wants to give good gifts to us you know we just thank and praise god for being a way maker and a miracle worker and a promise keeper you know because that is truly who he is um Lord is there another god. testimony thank you jesus is there another testimony on the line this morning? I love hearing these testimonies. Yeah. Yeah, I have a testimony. Praise God. So, um, as you guys know that I'm I'm ex military, and I've been trying to like apply to get to get plugged into the VA, both through mm -hmm. like disability and also through um, both through disability, also also through insurance. I'm already plugged in with my education, 
and with my housing, but I was trying to get like mostly like the health insurance. In fact, and I just got my letter back and I got approved for seventy percent of disability. And um, and now they're gonna pay me a reward. Glory I applied for my yes. uh, I applied for my, my original uh, claim. So this is gonna help me out a lot. It's gonna avalanche my life forward. I I've been in like a tan bill for like a very long time. So it's gonna open a lot of doors for me, especially like rehab and stuff. So I'm really happy about that. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't he do Thank it? Thank you, Won't Jesus. I want to pull over and shout right there. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Shout right there. God will do it. I tell you, he just loves us so much. He really does care about the things that we care about. And sometimes we can think because God's time is not our time and that, oh, God has forgotten about me or he doesn't care. And that is so far from the truth. God loves us. So God cares about little things like a parking space. I went to the store the other day. My knee was killing me. I've been having more issues with my knee than I've had in the past. And this past week has been hell for me and my knee. And it hurt so bad and it's been giving out and it's been cracking it's been feeling like it's just gonna snap in half and i went to the store and there was no close-up parts i said god i can't park way back here i just can't do it i didn't have it in me to do all that walking lo and behold i said let me circle around one more time as soon as i circle around the block a park opened up right there at the front the very first stall that you can get open up right there and i pulled in so he really does care about those things that we care about and we have to learn to trust his time i tell people a lot of time when i minister to them a, a lot of times we say we trust god and we probably really do but we don't never trust his time is because we think that he should move in a time frame that we want him to move but when god moves he moves he does it correctly he knows exactly when to move how to move you know how to do it he knows everything he's so detailed and so i just love how he operates in our lives and how he shows up and, and he allows us to know that he really does care in it and it helps us to grow in our relationship with him because now we know we, we, we go back into our memory bank and say wait a minute when we're going through something we can say wait a minute I remember when I was going through this situation and the Lord stepped in and he brought me out and so that's how we we grow at, you know in, in some ways in our relationship with Christ so I just truly look I, I just thank God so much that he doesn't change and that he is the same and his character is true and he is real and He's a living God. He's a living God. He's not an idol God. He's not a dead God. He he ain't some tree stump we worship. But he's a living God that really steps into our lives and he works things out and he he, he gives us grace and he gives us mercy and he gives us comfort and he gives us peace. He's a living God. He will talk. We can have a dialogue with God. We can talk to God and he will talk back to us. So I just truly think and praise God for who he is and for working it out and for, you know, each and every one of our lives, especially when we're going through. Is there another testimony on the line today? Is there another? Well, I don't have a testimony, but I just truly want to thank and praise God for being um, my my savior and, and, and my all in all. And I thank and praise God um, for waking me up on this morning, starting me on my way, as the old folks said, at, with the uh, activity of my limbs and in my right mind. You know, even with the, the knee uh, pain, I'm still able to walk. I'm still able to move my limbs. So I thank and praise God, you know, for, for all that he is to me, who he continues to be for grace and for mercy, you know, that's new every single morning I wake up. I don't have to worry about what I did on yesterday, what I didn't get right on yesterday, and, you know, what I might have done wrong on yesterday because he said every morning new mercies you'll see so I thank and praise God for the new mercy that we see on this morning um if there's not another testimony we're going to continue on in the service and at this time I am going to um have Sister Salisa come forward with our scripture for today good afternoon everybody Good afternoon. Um, I'm reading in Matthew 22, 1 through 14. Jesus spoke to them again in a parable saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some, servant, some more servants and said, tell, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my flattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his field, another to his, to his business. The rest seized his servants, 
mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite the banquet to anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was who's not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him down, tie him, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word. We know that God, God's word is already blessed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the announcement. We don't have many. Um, basically, it's concerning our our church um, cookout, annual church cookout. Um, so I think we're all in agreement that we will do late compounds um, at a um, discounted group rate, which I think it averages out to be about $30 has been changed, $31 at the most. Um, but what I am willing to do is to pay half of that cost. So then your cost would only be around $15.50. Um, we'll take it out of the church funds. We don't have much. So if we had more than the church funds uh, in the church funds, I would you know, cover everybody's full cost, um, especially since you guys have to get your own t-shirts. But um, unfortunately, uh, you know, um, there's not too many tithers, you know, um, and lately I think I've kind of been the only one that's been tithing. So the, the account is not where um, it could be. Um, um, and then the, the previous monies that we had, we had uh, agreed, those of us who are in office and position had agreed that we would take some out to help cover the expense of Brother Michael Ross. Um, so um, the count has gone down a bit and um, leaving me with, with in the position to be able to only pay half of um, your ticket for late compounds. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it for the announcements. Um, we don't have anything planned. Um, we all, um, had, I had talked to a few of you who stayed on the, the phone, um, last week, I believe about moving the time to one o'clock. And I think, and then I text everybody else. So everybody was kind of in agreement with it, um, to move the service to one o'clock, freeing up, you know, our day. So we're not, you know, busy, you know, doing this. And then here it comes six o'clock and it's, oh no, I got to go on church. And, you know, I figured one o'clock would be a better time. That way, once you're done, you're done. You can just go about your day. So um, I think that's pretty much it, unless someone else has something that they want to talk about. Um, I did receive monies from Alizé and Sister Alizé and Sister Karina um, for shirts. So I'm going to put their orders in today. What I'm going to do is, is as I get your money, I will put the orders in with the lady to do your shirts. Um, and then they'll come, you know, she'll, she'll ship them off and they'll come to my house whenever. And then I can distribute them accordingly. So um, that's pretty much it, I think, for the announcements today. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to add or would like us to know as far as announcements are concerned? If not, we're going to continue on um, in our service and I'm going to ask Sister Dawn if she will prepare her heart to begin to pray um, in our altar call prayer, our time of prayer. And for those of you who may be going through, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your mind, whether it's in your family, whether it's on your job, whatever the situation is, that we know that there's nothing too hard for God. I'm going to ask that you would uh, raise your hand and if you would like Sister Dawn to lift you in prayer as she's praying. Um, if there's a specific prayer request for a family member or a loved one, a friend, a coworker, if you can unmute yourselves quickly, call that person's name out. You know, God is still in the, the prayer answering business. He's still in the miracle working business. There's nothing too hard for him. If we will continue to remember um, Jameer, he's a young man of um, uh, minister, Reverend Josh Cotton um, and Sana um, Cotton, who was in a bad car accident. The other young man who was with him unfortunately passed away. The young lady walked away with some bruises, but I'm sure she'll be scarred mentally for life. If we can remember to lift him in prayer, I think Jameer had his last surgery and now is just playing the weight game to see if he can breathe on his own and stuff like that. So if we can remember to keep him in prayer, if we can remember to keep the private family in prayer who've lost, had multiple losses in the last couple of months, um, like you would not believe. Um, all those who are grieving at this time, um, whether it be for re from recent loss or a loss in the past, we know that um, 
you know, death is not easy, but it is necessary. So if we can remember to keep those in prayer, if we can remember to keep South Africa in prayer, they're really going through over there. There's a lot of looting, a lot of killing, a lot of stuff happening in South Africa. So if we can remember to keep South Africa in prayer, if we can remember to keep Haiti in prayer, you know, there's a lot of killing going on in Haiti right now. If we can remember to keep Germany, Germany has been flooded. They've lost a hundred something lives and there's still a hundred something lives that are missing. If we can remember to keep Florida in prayer, Florida has that tower that fell and so many lives were lost and so many lives were unaccounted for. And then unfortunately they had to stop um, even looking for the lives. But we know God knows exactly where they are. So we can remember, if we can remember to keep our rulers and our leaders in prayer, you know, we know that as Sister Dawn stated so eloquently earlier, um, elevation truly does come from God. So anybody who is in position right now, whether it be the president, the vice president, whether it be governor, whether it be secretary of state, no matter what their position, whether it be a police officer, we know that elevation and promotion comes from God and that they are there for a reason. They are all a part of God's strategic plan. So we know God's plan is perfect. So we just want to continue to lift up our nation as a whole, um, those who are struggling with this pandemic, with this new strain, we want to lift up everybody. So I'm going to ask right now, if you have a specific prayer request, please unmute yourself and call out that person's name. If not, I'm going to ask if um, uh, Sister Dawn, who is our minister in training, will um, prepare her heart to lead us in the altar call prayer. Amen. I'm asking you all, could you please lift up, I'm going to keep my mother in your prayers, she lost a dear friend of hers that she used to talk to every night before she went to sleep for a couple of hours. And that person has passed away two days ago and her heart is truly broken. I'm asking you to lift me up. It's been a little over a month that my dear friend and love have went home. And sometimes it gets difficult for me and, and, and now that time is passing by and, it, you know, you haven't heard, you know, from that person and it, it gets hard sometimes. So just if you could lift up my mother and myself um, in prayer and also as the challenges in my life are getting ready to change, my life is getting ready to be different as far as jobs and, and city and town that I live in just to, to keep me um, humble before the Lord as, as I transition um, and the things that have been in my life for so long. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come humbly before your throne of grace, God. We are lifting up the name of Jesus, God, because you said if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men unto you. Father God, before we ask you for anything, God, we just want to thank you for everything, God. We want to repent our sins and ask for your forgiveness, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, unto you do we give thanks, praise, glory, and honor. God, you heard all the prayer requests that went forth on today, Father God. Father God, we lift, we lift Lisa up to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for being concerned about her, God. And we thank you for working out whatever it is on her behalf, God. Because we know that you are all powerful and there is nothing too hard for you, God. God, we lift up the prayer that family, Lord, we know that they have been going through, God. But we know with you, they can get through, God. We thank you for being close to the brokenhearted, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we lift up Jamir, God. Oh, stop by and remember him, God. God, Hallelujah. we believe you for healing powers, God. Let him come out with a testimony, God. Yes, that can Lord. only come from you, God. Hallelujah. Let him tell everybody about your goodness, Jesus. God. In the name of Jesus, God. Okay, God. I want to lift up my co-worker, Troy, God. Oh, Where have we got Thank that you, aneurysm that is in Hallelujah. his word, God? As you open Thank him you. up, Lord. Oh, Father Thank God, let the doctors be amazed at the goodness and the power of you, God. God, Darlene, God. Oh, Father God, thank, thank you for being Jesus. near to her, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping her. Thank you for using her. Thank you for blessing her. Yes, thank you for working it out for her, God. Yes, in the name God. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, even her mother, God, right now, thank God. You, Jesus. We ask that you be near her, God. We ask that you wrap your arms around her, God. We ask that you, she feels you, God, in her time yeah. of sorrow, God. Everyone who is on that line, on our line this evening, God. Everyone is believing you for something, God. So asking that you come through, Father God, for them in a way that they know it is only you. 
got her past the Lord. We ask that you bless her, Father God. We ask that you let no her harm danger before yes, Lord. Before yes, God. Her, God. And that no plague come near her dwelling, God. Yes, we dip her in the blood of the Lamb, Father God, yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, we believe you that everything that's good and perfect comes from you and you alone, yes. God. Oh, Father God, let, your, let this word, this prayer request, not fall on deaf ears, God. We know that your arms are not so short that you cannot save, God. We thank you that you are in heaven, God, but you are looking throughout the earth, God. Yes. We thank you for healing, God. We thank you for delivering, God. God, we break and bind the spirit of distraction, God. Thank we you, break Lord. and bind the spirit of addiction. We break and bind the spirit of loneliness, God. Mm, we my, my. break and bind, Father God, anything that will keep us from you, Lord. We want to be like you, Lord. Teach us to be more like you, God, in the name of Jesus. Order yes. our steps in your word, God. Yes. Oh, Father God, we'll be so careful to give your name oh, to praise, man. God. Like unto you, there is no other God. We are crying out, God, in these last yes, days. God. Death is running rampant throughout the land, God. Yes. And we do not yes. want you to call our number, God. God, so we come to you just as we are. And we ask you to live inside of us and direct us, God. Oh, Father God, we love you on today because you first yes, love us, Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness. Thank you. That Jesus. is everlasting, God. Oh, Amen. Father God, we thank you for these things and all things. And Jesus, holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Thank God. You, Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's something about having a conversation with Jesus. It truly does make everything all right. Uh, just thank and praise God for that beautiful, beautiful prayer that our minister and training, Sister Dawn Ross, has sent up before the throne of grace on our behalf. Um, truly just thank God for the ways, the many ways that he is using her and he is maturing her in the body of Christ. I just truly thank God. God is so real. He's so real and he cares so much about us. And I just truly thank and praise God just for being who he is. I'm going to attempt to sing a little bit of this song before I go into the priest word of God. So if you'll just bear with me um, as I sing. Father, I stretch my hands to Thee, no the help. I know if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, where the I go. I'm going to sing that one more time. Father, I stretch my hands, hallelujah, to thee. No, uh, the help I know is the withdrawal thyself from me. Tell me where the shell I go. 
Praise God. 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 saints praise god praise him he's worthy of all the honor and he is worthy of all the praise i'm going to be coming from the book of matthew for those of you who would like to follow along matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14 matthew is the first book in the new testament for those of you who will be using your physical Bibles to um, look for the passage of scripture. It is the first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 22, verses one through 14. I will be reading from the Message Bible, which may be worded a little different from your version. I'll be starting at verse number one and going through verse 14. Jesus responded by telling more stories. God's kingdom, he said, is like a king who threw a wedding banquet for his son. He sent out servants to call in all the invited guests and they wouldn't come. He sent out another round of servants, instructed them to tell the guests, look, everything is on the table. The prime rib is ready for carving. Come to the feast. They only shrugged their shoulders and went off, one to weed his garden, another to work in his shop, the rest with nothing better to do, beat up on the messengers and then killed them. The king was outraged and sent his soldiers to destroy those thugs and, and level their city. Then he told his servants, we have a wedding banquet all prepared, but no guests. The ones I invited weren't up to it. Go out into the busiest intersections in town and invite anyone you find to the banquet. The service went out on the streets and rounded up everyone they laid eyes on, good and bad regardless. And so the banquet was on, every place filled. When the king entered and looked over the scene, he spotted a man who wasn't properly dressed. And he said to him, friend, how dare you come in here looking like that? The man was speechless. Then the king told his servants, get him out of here fast, tie him up and ship him to hell and make sure he doesn't get back in. That's what I mean when I say many get invited, only a few make it. Let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting father, 
God, as we come into your presence, we come into your presence giving you thanks and praise. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of any sins of omission and commission, God. God, we come into your praise, lifting up your holy name, for you said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, as I begin to open my mouth, that you will speak in and through and to me, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Ghost. This is your service, God. So we just thank you, oh God, for the word that shall come forth, that will strengthen us, that will fortify us oh god that will edify us but god most of all you will be glorified we just thank you in the name of jesus god hide me now behind calvary's cross oh god that they might not see you me oh god but that they would only hear you so i just thank you for doing it now be reckless holy ghost do what you will do what you want have your divine way in me today it is in jesus name that i pray amen and amen i have entitled this sermon you're invited. You're invited. When we receive invitations in the mail, um, you know, sometimes we get excited, depending on where the invitation is from. Sometimes we may get a little worried because we don't know, you know, if we can make the occasion, if we have the money to buy a gift to support the occasion. Um, but invitations, nonetheless, are something of, of, of a good thing to receive in the mail, and especially a wedding invitation. You know, um, a wedding invitation is always an exciting invitation to receive. And this parable that is being told in this particular passage of scripture um, by Jesus is, is being compared to a wedding banquet that a king is getting for his son. The, the king representing God, the son representing Jesus Christ. And so in this, in this wedding parable, um, he is talking to the religious leaders of that day because they were always challenging they were always challenging you know um jesus and always trying to ask him questions trying to trip him up you know um on the word of god and and not realizing they were setting themselves up because uh, here they were talking to god himself you know and so jesus gives this parable he gave a couple he gave three parables to explain what the kingdom of heaven is like and and that's simply what a parable is a parable is a, 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 a earthly way of speaking words to represent what heaven is like. And so what he did, he does, is he gives, he gives these three parables, you know, he gives two parables before this parable. This is the third parable that he gives these religious leaders. And he says, the kingdom of God is unlike, is likened unto a, 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 a king um, having a wedding banquet for his son and inviting all these guests. And then, you know, the guests don't show up, you know, or whatever. And so, um, I just thought it was so interesting that he's here he is he is this is the king this is the, the the king this is god this is the most high who is sending out this invitation to these people to come and to join in and 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 some of them said no some of some of them went their own way the bible says some of them you know went back to their homes and some of them went back to their jobs and some of them went here and some of them were there and when you think about what is going on in our society today god is still giving out that call he is still beckoning people to come he has teachers and preachers and, and rulers and leaders that are out there compelling men that are going here. They're going into the hedges. They're going to the highways. They're going to the streetways. They're going to the inner cities. They're going to the drug houses. They're going to certain places and they're telling people about Jesus and they're telling them to come, but people are still saying no. And then you have those people that are, are, are who think that they could come on their own terms. Like, like the, 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 the young man at the end of the, the parable who, who somehow got in when he shouldn't have, and, and he, he thought that he could come on his own terms. And a lot of times today, especially in this day and age, people think that they can name and, and claim their own Christianity, if I can put it that way. They think they can continue to do this, that, and the other, and they're still going to make it to heaven. Or I can speak this way and that way and that way, and I'm still going to heaven. Basically, I don't need to do this thing Jesus' way. I'm going to do it my way, but because he's so gracious and he's so full of mercy, I'm going to make it in anyways. But the Bible says you won't make it in unless you have the right garments and you have to put on the right clothes. And the right garments God is talking about, he's talking about salvation. He's talking about his righteousness. Because if you think about our righteousness, the scripture says our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we can't go in on our own marriage. We can't go in on our own righteousness. We can't go in on what we think is right. But we have to take on God's righteousness. We have to take on God's salvation. We have to put on the garments that God has given us in order to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because that's what the wedding feast is all about. It's about making it into the kingdom of heaven. 
and we don't want to get to the gate and we don't want to get inside of heaven. And then God says, wait a minute, you shouldn't be here. Bind that person up and throw them out into utter darkness. We're just going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We don't want to hear those words. So we want to get it right while we're down here on earth. We want to do the things that God is calling us to do. Which is to accept his salvation. Put on his righteousness. We can't do it in our own way. I can't keep continue to, to stay in relations and fornicate and lay and play and chuck and jive and peep and hive and think that I'm going to make it to heaven. That's my righteousness. That's me not changing nothing about that's me just continuing to go on in my way. But yet I've said, you know, yep, this is my Lord and Savior. This is this is this is this is the uh, the king that represents me. Now, if we were going to a wedding that President Obama, you know, was thrown in, President Obama said, you have to dress this type of way. We would be honored to go to that wedding. Not only would we be honored, but we would dress exactly the way he told. If he said, I want you to wear a white top with black slaps and a white hat, we were going to that wedding looking exactly the way he told us to go. But somehow we got an issue with God telling us that this is the way I need you to be in order to come to my wedding bank. In order for you to make it into my kingdom, you need to put on these garments. You need to put on these clothes to make it into the, to the, the kingdom of heaven where I'm at. We don't want to do those things. We want to stay stuck in the things that we want to do because we're so busy trying to please the flesh that we're so, we're so we're so convinced right now that, you know, right now I, I'm not going to give this up right now. I'm not going to stop doing this because it feels too good to me. It, it, it makes me happy on the inside. It, it gives me some sort of gratification to be doing these things. So we don't want to put those things down. We want to continue to do those things. So we convince ourselves that I got time to, to do it later, or, you know, I, I can, I, I'll, I'll get it right, you know, sometime in the future, or maybe, you know, God will just forgive me because he knows how much this needs my heart so I can just continue to do this but we are just deceiving ourselves the bible says you have to take on the righteousness of God we have to take on his righteousness we can't do it in our own way we can't do it in our own mirrors and I think a lot of Christians today are confused when it comes to stuff like that they say the Lord is my savior. They say the Lord is my shepherd. They say the Lord is my this. They say the Lord is my salvation. They say the Lord is my this, but they are doing nothing of what the Lord requires. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to pick up your cross daily and follow me. This is not an easy task. It's not an easy feat. Paul said, every day I have to die to my flesh. Every single day, there's something that I should be working on in me to get myself right. In fact, God says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So it lets me know that every day there's an area in my life. There's, there's a thought process in my head. There's an issue in my heart that I need to be working on to get those things right. I can continue on in my sin, continue on doing all those things that I'm big and bad enough to do and think that I'm going to go to heaven. God, and you know, God is so merciful and so loving and so kind that he just didn't send this invitation to, to certain people. He sent it to everybody. Everybody in this world has the same opportunity to give their lives to Christ, to take on the helmet of salvation, and to put on the garment of righteousness. He didn't give it to a certain elect people. He didn't care if they were rich or poor. He didn't care if they were tall or fat, tall or short, fat or skinny. He didn't put stipulations on it. It didn't matter to him. Whether you're a murderer or whether you're an a, 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 a educational a teacher. He didn't say it's only going to go to a certain class of people. Didn't matter whether you were black, white, pink, green, or brown. But this invitation has gone out to everybody. He told his servants, go, go anywhere and find people to come to fill up this, 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 this wedding. And that's what he's telling us, go as, as, as Christians, as, as, as believers in Christ, as 
teachers, as preachers, as pastors, as evangelists, as lay people, go and tell people about this wedding feast. Tell them what it's like to have peace. Tell them what it's like to have joy. Tell them that in this place, there's going to be no more sorrow. There's going to be no more pain. There's going to be no more crying. There's going to be no more dying. The streets are paved with gold. Tell them about this place. Tell them about this wedding banquet that you are going to. And we need to get out there and go and be about our father's business. But not just saying it in word, but doing it in deed. Let our actions line up with what is coming out of our mouth. Let people see the Christ in you. And see that Jesus is real. We got too many people walking around here the, in, 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 being, being an imposter. That's exactly what the young man was at the end of this parable. He was an imposter who somehow slipped through the crack and got into the banquet. But he never once had on the garments that God required him to have on. And the thing of it is, is God supplied the garments the same way he freely gives to us salvation. He supplied the garments the same way he freely gives his righteousness to us. Because if you think about it, we could never be in right standing with God in our own merits. And with our own strength, we could never please God. We could never be who he wants us to be. We don't have it in us. Why? Because the flesh is corrupt. The flesh is only subject to the things of the flesh. The flesh is not subject to the things of God. That's why the flesh goes back and into the ground and does not inherit the kingdom of God. But this man was an imposter who slipped through the cracks. We don't want to follow in this man's footsteps. We want to make sure that what is coming out of our mouth is exactly the way we're living, is exactly how we're being. Because you have to remember, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He sees you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There is nothing that gets by him. The scripture says everything is naked and exposed in the eyesight of God. Everything you do, every thought you think, before you even know the thought is going to come, God already knows. God is inviting us all to this wedding banquet and he's requiring, his only requirements are that we put on the right garments. That is coming with a sincere heart. Accept Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. Ask him to come and be Lord and master. I don't care what you're not doing right right now. God has the power to help you to get it right. There's nothing too hard for God. There's no addiction. There's no situation. There's nothing, nothing. The enemy will try to trip you up and trap you up. Remember, he is the father of lies himself. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I like to add it, he comes to distract. And he's so faithful with his job that he has our minds going this way and that way and thinking this and thinking that. And a lot of that stuff is not true. When God simply says, come to me exactly how you are. Cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you know when you live tripped up and trapped up in the cares of this world, it can weigh you down and your heart can become heavy. You become tired. You become frustrated. You don't know what to do. And when you don't know Jesus, I truly believe a lot of times. When suicide happens, it happens to a lot of folk who don't know Jesus. They didn't know to give it to him. They didn't know to, that he would take it from them. They didn't know that he would trade in his, 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 their, his, their burdens for his yoke. They didn't know that. They may have known of him because no man will leave him without hearing about Jesus. Trust that one. What kind of a God would he be? He says he will come back when every man has heard the word. But to know him is different. To know him is to have relationship with him. To know him is to read his word. To know him is to seek him out. To know him is to talk to him in prayer. To know him is to listen for him to talk back. This thing is not about us. 
It's not about doing things our way. It's not about doing what we think is in our mind. Your mind can be so deceiving. Line your mind up with the things of God. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. Let this mind also be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We have to, we have to, 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 to take our minds and train them in the things of God. Train them in those things that, in those ways that Jesus tells us to be. It's not going to happen overnight, but I guarantee you, if you don't give up, and if you keep your hands in his hands, it will happen. And you will be so surprised. And you'll say, oh my God, I don't do that no more. And when that's done, move on to the next issue in your life because it's always going to be an issue. How do I know that? Because God said, I who began a good work in you will not stop until the day Jesus Christ returns. So we're always going to have work to do. There's always going to be an area in our lives that we need to perfect or we need to get right. You're invited. What are you going to do with this invitation? Each and every one of you are invited. But in order for us to not be that imposter, we have to do it God's way. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. So you may think that you are doing this thing right, and you may think that there's nothing wrong. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't be like that imposter who got in, who was not willing to put on the garment that God asked him to put on, that God gave him freely. The same way God has given us salvation and righteousness freely. Let's not waste this opportunity. Let's not get there and hear God say, I'm sorry, but you don't belong here. You never took me at my word. You never put on those clothes that I gave you. You selfishly kept on those clothes that you wanted to wear. And you continue to do those things that you wanted to do. You're invited, each and every one of you. You are invited. God has no respecter of persons. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have done. There is an open invitation to join in and to live and reign with Jesus Christ for the rest of your days. Eternity goes on and on and on and on and on. It never stops. God says he gives us 70 years. That's the a lot of time that he gives man 70 years to live. Some live past that. Some live to 120. I think I saw on Facebook the other day, some lady was 120 years old. Praise be unto God for that. But even at 120 years, it's nothing compared to eternity. Eternity does not stop. God's word is true. The one thing I love about God is his character. You can count on God to be exactly who he says he is. He says, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I don't change. And we can see with, 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 with the word of God, we can see with our physical eyes in the bodies that we live in now, the words that are in some of those books are coming to pass right before us. He has no reason to lie. He has no reason to make things up. He wants us to make it in. He said in his word, I wish no man to perish, but that all men will come to repentance. He's such a loving and a kind and a merciful God who is so full of love for his creation. And God's hands have literally created each and every one of us along with every other person in the world who is living or has lived or will live. 
and he wanted everybody to come and live with him. Everybody was invited to this banquet. Everybody was invited to this wedding party. But unfortunately, some people took to their own ways and they went this way and that way and they continued to do those things they wanted to do. They never once heeded the voice of God. They never once put on those garments, salvation, righteousness, never once. But God has said, I'm extending this invitation to you all. It's, it's, it's open. It's an open invitation to come to me exactly as you are. Take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. Give me your addictions. Give me your anxieties. Give me your cares. Give me your physical ailments. Give me your disabilities. Give them to me. Give me your fears. God is asking. He's saying I'm right here arms wide open to receive each and every one of you. Give them to me. Cast them at my feet. You don't have to carry these burdens alone. You don't have to go through this alone. I am right here and I'm waiting. I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. You know, and the, the, the funny thing is back in those days, they, they didn't have a, a, a postal service system like we do so when the invitation went out they literally went around knocking on doors and hand delivered them and when it was time for the feast they would have to go around and knock back on the doors and let people know that the feast is ready but today we we, we are we're blessed to have a postal system and we're also blessed to have a, a direct connect with God who says I'm right here I don't have to go to Dawn's house and knock on the door and and, and, and tell her about God we, we're all right here on Zoom. Modern technology. We got cell phones, text messages, phone calls. There's so many ways to let people know about Jesus Christ and his kingdom and his goodness, his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness, but most of all, his love and salvation. You're invited. What you do with the invitation is totally up to you. But God wants you to know that you're invited. And once you accept the invitation, don't just stop there. Get out. Go out into the highways, into the hedges. Go out to anybody you see and tell them about this Jesus Tell them about the Savior that saved. Tell them about the King that has invited you to the most royal, most beautiful wedding that will ever take place. And tell them that they are invited too. You're invited. Be blessed, children of God. The doors of the church are now open. I believe that everybody on here is a member. So we're going to um, just continue on. If there's anybody in here who is in a backslidden state, know that you can come to Jesus right now. We will pray with you and for you. And know that God is a God that says, I am married to the backslider. And so God is a God of reinstatement. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. If there's anybody who in here who does not know Jesus in the free parting of your sin, if you've never taken that opportunity or the time to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time to do that. Is there one? Is there one? I believe that we are all saved on this line. I don't know if you're in a backslidden state. That's between you and God. But I've given the, the call, the opportunity to come forward for prayer. So if there's not one, we're going to continue on in the service. And I am going to um, ask Minister Darlene if she will give us our benediction and close us out. Amen, amen, amen. One second, amen. Wait a minute. Wait. Amen.
Amen, amen, and glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, I thank God for that word. What an awesome word that um, the pastor had given us this afternoon. And, and we thank God for that. We thank God for the word and for the benediction. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you, Lord, as humble as we know how. We thank you, God, for that word. We thank you, God, for the invitation, God. We thank you, God, that you have kept us, God, in the place that we're in at. God, asking you, God, to help us in our, in our elevation, God, so that we may keep our invitation to the wedding, God, that we may elevate ourselves in you, God. Oh, God, and the things that you asking us to do and telling us to do, God, that we may hear you, God. Oh, God, that we may hear the voice of the Lord, God, telling us and showing us, God, how to keep our invitation to the wedding. Truly, we don't want to show up and can't stay at the wedding, God. We don't want to go before God and he say, depart from me. I never even knew you. God, we thank you for this message, God, and showing us and telling us, God, how to stay before you, God. God, and we're asking you to search our mind, our heart, our body, and our soul, God. If it's anything in us, God, that's stopping us, God, from coming to the wedding, yes, God. God. Yes, we're God. asking you, God, to show us, God. Bring it to our mind, God. Oh, God, so we can get it right, God. We want to come to the wedding, God. Hallelujah. We want to keep our invitation, God. Glory to your name, God. Oh, God, we thank you for this word, God. We thank you, God, for each and every one on the line, God. We thank you, God, that how we're committed and dedicated, Lord, to keep coming out, God. Oh, God, keep us humble, God, before the throne, God. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise your name, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, let us intercede, God, for our loved one, God, so they yes. too can come to the wedding, God. Oh, God, let us reach out, God. Some people want an invitation, God. We got to invite them to God. We got to invite them to the word of God. Yes, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we got to tell him about a man named Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. That died in the pardon of our sins, God. Thank you, Lord. And that's the way to the Father in the pardon of our sins, God. Thank you, God. If it's anything in me, God, that's not like you, God, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus to remove it, God. Keep me humble before the throne. Each and every one on the line, God. We yes, truly Lord. thank God for that prayer that went forward in the altar God, call God we thank you God thank you, oh God we sing growth God hallelujah Jesus we receive that hallelujah thank you Jesus we thank you for the pastor God thank in you, the Jesus. word God how you spoke through her God to the line God oh God to let us know God if we keep you first in our life wherever we're at God Jesus mm -hmm. said come to me the way that you are and let me yes. hallelujah deliver you and set you free we receive that word hallelujah Jesus oh mm -hmm. God we thank you God we praise your name thank God you, oh God we as we go throughout our, our day today God we're asking you to help keep that word in our heart God that when we're laboring heavy laden God we can come to you when you said mm -hmm. you would give us rest God you yes, said, cast God. your cares unto you, God, because you care for us, God. Yes, oh, Lord. God, we thank you for that, God, that thank we can remember, we can come to you just the way that we are, God. We praise your name. We glorify you, God. Thank you, And Lord. we thank you, God. And as we leave this line, God, but not from your presence, God, that you will go through the rest of this day and through the rest of the week until we meet again, God. Yes, Glory, Lord. God. We leave this line, God, but not from your presence, Lord. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we lift you up, and we say thank you, God, in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and praise. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know who Billboards is, but would you like to say something before we get off the line? I guess not.
Well, anyways, I love you all, and I shall see you on next Sunday. One o'clock. Amen. 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 Yes. I was so good to Amen. Oh, Quintella, everybody. So happy.